Okay, everybody, welcome to session 6.2. This is a chance for us to talk about reports, proposals, and manuals. We'll talk about reports, proposals, and manuals first, and then about the concept of giving instructions, because that's a unique and challenging form of communication that you need to be able to do in this class. Um, as far as reports, proposals, and manuals are concerned, what I want you to mostly understand is when you'll use each of these three. Format-wise, they're all pretty similar to each other. In fact, the Baker guidelines on, on reports are the place to start. Um, all of the general advice that I've given you about visual design, uh, uh, all of that advice applies. And, uh, and in terms of writing style, this is all about being simple, plain, direct, and we'll give you some examples of that and why it's important. When do you write a report? That's when you need decisions about the topic reported. And I, I want to harken back to what I, how I defined effective writing once upon a time. You remember I said that writing is, effective writing is writing used to make decisions. That is, you're trying to get certain outcomes or effects from what you've done, from what you've written. And so that's how I'll differentiate between these three. So reports are decisions about a topic that's being reported. So for example, do we think this is worth the budget line next year? Um, so, so you're reporting on, on, for example, maybe a need, a financial need within your organization. And so, they're, so with that report, they're gonna be making a decision about that uh, line item. Uh, proposals are when you need decisions made about new ideas. Um, this is when you're proposing something new. If you're going to investors, for example, for a social venture idea, or donors for a nonprofit grant application, or <clears throat> um, really any, or maybe you want your your executive director to institute a new program, um, this is what a proposal is for. And again, the focus is this decision about whether or not the the, the new idea should be uh, undertaken. Manuals involve decisions about how to operate. Um, people within the organization need to know how to do things. Uh, for example, how do I report volunteer hours for the quarter? Um, a lot of organizations have to, ta have to track volunteer hours for reporting purposes. And the way to report it, you need to communicate to the people doing the reporting. If you don't give them these instructions through something like a manual, then you don't get the information you need. So these are the three different ways to think about reports, proposals, and manuals. Um, it's really important that you do focus on the decisions being made in each of these cases, and that should be the way you gear everything that you write. That's kind of it. I mean, all the basic stuff we've covered already in terms of writing and visual design are, are really easily applied into reports, proposals, and manuals. The truth is you don't have the same sort of strangely specific requirements in these documents that you have, for example, with a letter or a memo, right? In a memo, you need the, the information block at the top. That's what makes it a memo. The same is true of a letter. You have to make sure you have the address block in the right place, the date in the right place, the salutation has to be appropriate. When it comes to these documents, you have a lot more flexibility about how they look and work. Um, but it, altogether, the thing you focus on are the decisions that you're hoping will come about because of what you've created. What I do want to talk especially about is the idea of giving instructions. And, I say, and this is giving focus because giving instructions is one of the hardest forms of communication. Some of you have probably done an activity in the past where, you know, um, you had to, where it's like a team building activity where one group could see the thing that had to be created and they had to explain to the other group how to create it, like out of Legos, for example, like we did at the Grant Low Retreat. Um, those are fun activities because they really quickly exhibit how it's one thing to see and understand something and it's another to explain and describe to someone else how to recreate that thing. Um, because giving instructions is so hard, it's important to understand how to do it well, and the truth is you'll find yourself doing this all the time professionally. Uh, and I want to spend a moment in class talking about this, about how frequently you really do give instructions in the workplace. Because it's such a hard form of communication, precision and clarity are essential. Um, instructions have to be clear and precise in order for the instructions you give to work. Um, there, there, I want to give some advice on how you sort of create this process of giving instructions. Um, whenever there's a task that needs an instruction set for it, uh, you, you need to identify the steps involved, you need to then describe the steps well, and then you need to verify the steps to make sure that you, 
you've written it in a way that actually helps somebody accomplish the task in question. Let's talk first about identifying steps. There's an interesting line of research, actually. It's pretty narrow and small, but, but crucially important. And it has to do with, with nuclear reactor safety. And what the research has shown is that when there is a nuclear emergency, it's obviously critically important that engineers follow a certain number of steps to prevent, say, a meltdown or, or, a, or a leak of radioactive gas or any of the other bad things that can happen with a nuclear plant. These are incredibly complex operations and there's a lot to consider. And what the research has shown is that if you ask somebody to, to, to do these steps under stress, they will do a worse job um, but depending on how the steps have been written. And it essentially works this way. You need to explain every tiny step with exact precision. It'll feel like you're over explaining, but you need to get the person from point A to point B with precision because the stress of the moment and the situation is so great that their capacity to think in more sophisticated abstract ways is eliminated. They can't think long term, they can't think about consequences. And so if you're writing instructions for a nuclear engineer in the case of a potential meltdown, you have to articulate every individual one clearly. Now why do I give this example? It's because too often when people are writing instructions, they don't get granular enough or detailed enough in the steps involved. They, they too quickly jump from step A to step B, not realizing that there are a bunch of intervening steps that are obvious to the writer, but not obvious to the reader. And these, the, the gap of intervening steps can be pretty frustrating. And, and I think all of you probably had the experience of reading a manual or following a set of instructions where there were missing steps in between. That I guarantee you it most likely happened because this, the intervening steps were obvious to the author, uh, who was probably an expert in this area, but they're not obvious to you. And so when you're identifying the steps, think in a very granular way. Could somebody follow your steps, for example, to su a successful completion if they were facing a high stress load? Uh, sometimes people worry about being too granular in the steps. That's If you're going to make a mistake, it's better to give too much detail and instructions than not enough. Um, but it's important to make sure you break down those steps. So the, the best way to think about how to do this is generally you need to separate steps by actions. Each, each action gets a step. So if it's turn to this page, that's a step. If it's click on this button on your screen, that's a step. And so each time the person has to take an action, then that should be a step in the instructions. The way you describe the steps matters a lot, and I'm going to give you a really simple framework to make sure to, that will help you every time you're describing instructions. That this framework will help you do it really well. The, there are three things that you need to do in your description. One, you need to tell the reader what they what they should see. So these are examples coming from uh, from a computer program. In the top left corner, you'll find a button. So you're telling them okay, this is what you should see now, is this button in the top left corner. Now you would think you would want to say, now click on that button, you don't want to do that yet. Instead, you need to tell them the significance of that button. So tell them what they see, tell them the significance of what they're seeing. This button submits the form to our assessors so they understand what happens when they click on it. And then you give the do step, which is click the button once you've double checked your information. So this see, know, do process should be embedded in every single step of instructions that you give to somebody. Tell them what they should see, should be seeing, tell them what they need to know about what they're seeing, and then tell them what to do with what they're seeing. Finally, it's important you go through the process of verifying steps, and the absolute best way to do that is to ask someone to follow your instructions. Find a stranger. Uh, you're going to be doing a, a, a QDA assignment, get, creating an instruction set for a tool that you've built. Send the tool, the Excel tool, and your instructions to somebody who knows nothing about this and see how well they can follow your instructions. This is the best validation. You should do it every time. When it comes to instructions, I do want to make the important point that format matters. You can't give instructions without being attentive to visual design. I'll give you an example here. This comes from the, uh, from the uh, plainlanguage.gov website that we used earlier in the semester. 
uh, if you follow these instructions here, it will, it, they're not bad instructions. And I'm not even going to change the text, but I'm going to show you how I can make them a lot better. It's by simply adding these headings. These headings all of a sudden give structure to the instructions that are being provided. It gives the, the, the headings give clarity. Um, I didn't even um, I didn't even change the text, and there are ways we could improve the text by changing it. But uh, just putting in headings made a huge difference in how these instructions work. In fact, the nice thing about instructions is they can be heavily structured visually. You can use a lot of bulleted lists. You can use a lot of headings. Instructions don't work like normal prose, where you expect to be able to read at least a few paragraphs without visual interruptions. That's not how instructions work. And so when you create the visual design of an instruction set, I encourage you to, to use a lot of the design elements we talked about um, because they will add a bunch of clarity to, to the person. They're not reading it like they would read a report. They're reading it to go through a process. And all of these visual cues help them to know where they are in the process and what's coming next and so forth. Anyway, that's it. So uh, we'll be talking about these things and doing some practice along these lines tomorrow. Do a little activity on giving instructions and we'll look forward to our discussion.